And, but this machine uh, recognizes the same language, A, because that's the whole point. We're trying to prove equivalence, right? And that's what equivalence is, two machines that recognize the same language. Okay, now uh, I'm going to do this proof in two parts. Uh, the easier part first, and then uh, we'll modify the first part. We'll modify the first proof uh, to a slightly more complicated case. So the simpler, simpler case is when this uh, NFA has zero eaters, okay? No eaters. And then once we've got that proof, that will guide us, motivate us uh, to proving the more general case when your NFA does have eaters. Okay? So it'll be a two-part proof. So, uh, okay, now, so we'll start with the Q dash. Well, from the discussion before, we suggested, we thought it would be a good idea to let the set of states of your NFA, or your Q dash, in other words, same thing, be the set of, well, in other words, the power set. So Q dash is just the power set, right? Um, so, uh, so up state in the NFA would be a subset of your states in Q. So, so Q dash is your power set, right? So, so every state in your simulating DFA is uh, is a set of states of your RF, um, of your NFA, okay? So that, that that was like a core idea. So, okay, so we've decided now on what Q dash is. It's just the power set of Q, okay? So, uh, so the size of Q dash will be a lot larger than Q. That's, all right. Now, uh, here's where things get uh, harder and more abstract. And uh, I, you know, I'd ask you to really concentrate on this and you know, play it over in your head until, uh, until you really get it. Now, if you're really smart and you have a very high IQ, maybe this is not so challenging. You say, oh, yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah. Here's, here's where things get tougher. All right. Uh, okay, now remember, now Q dash is now the power set. Uh, the, uh, uh, a, uh, a state in your Q dash, a state in your simulating uh, DFA, your, your deterministic finite automaton, is, is a subset of Q. Okay? So, so now what's R? So R is just the state of your um, your DFA. It, it's, a, it's just one of the states, you know, R, R is just one of your states of your uh, DFA. Okay? And let A be uh, uh, some input symbol, you know, coming in. That's a, a member of your alphabet. Right? Now, uh, now we're, now we're starting to talk about the uh, transition function. This is the guts, the hard, the harder part. Okay? So the transition function of your DFA, the, the thing you're trying to build. So uh, now it's a transition function. It will depend on the uh, current state and the input signal. And, yeah, that's that's as usual. But remember now, your big R now is a subset of the states of your NFA subset of Q, right? That's, that's what this R is. Don't forget, that's critical. Yeah, that's, that's the assumption. All right, now, uh, now it's a transition function, so it's going to give you uh, a next state. Uh, call, it, call it little Q, and it'll be a member of... Uh, and now his... his <laughs> Now you, you need you know, like this is like the critical line almost in the proof. Uh, study it, really study it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. So a little, so it's the set of little q belonging to big Q such that little q belongs to delta of little r comma a. Uh, belongs to delta of little r comma a. So this this is abstract mathematical language. So let's try and translate it 
uh, yeah, it's formal, formal language, it's a formal definition, it's a proof. So let's try to, but, but to try and get an intuitive idea of what's going on, let's try and translate that into what's happening in the machine. Remember, you're, you, you are trying to be this simulating uh, DFA. So what, what's going on here? Okay, so you have, a, you have a subset of states of Q, of your NFA, right? And you're trying to uh, find what the next state uh, would be. Now, it'll be a set of states, right? That's, that's typical of... Uh, because these R's here, they are subsets of states of Q, right? So... Uh, so you'll have, you'll have a set of states uh, belonging to, to Q, because that, that, that's what... You're trying to find the next R, right? The next state. So it'll, be, yeah, it'll probably, in general, be a set of states. So, so, so which set? Yeah, which, which states? Well, it'll be the set of, R, uh, set of Qs. Now, what are these Qs? Well, there's a condition on these little Qs. Uh, they belong to the, the transition of uh, little r and a. Now, what's going on there? Uh, now, that's little r. Little r. Now, this is big r. This is big r is the state. In other words, a subset of uh, Q. Now, little r is uh, just one state of your NFA, right? So, what what's going on here? This delta, that's the transition function for your NFA, right? And this is the current state, little r, that's the current state in your NFA, right? And a, well, that's just your current input signal, okay? And this delta here, a little r, comma a, that will give you the next state of the NFA, right? So, so this Q belongs to uh, that, that state. Now, uh, the state, the state of a of an NFA in general is, yeah, you know, can be a set set of states, right? So, uh, yeah, you, know, you see what I mean. The abstraction level is getting harder, right? Uh, now wait a minute. And this little R here, if I've interpreted correctly, is actually a member of. Uh, this big R. Now, now R will be a, a set of states of Q. So this this little R will be one of them. Okay. And uh, in, intuitively, like when we were doing the fingering and the pinning, we were processing each state, each machine, one at a time. And that's sort of what's going on here. So you have, you have a set of them. You do one at each. You, know, you do one at a time. That's sort of implicit in here, so try to think in those terms if you like. Uh, so, effectively this, you can rewrite in this way, okay? Um, for each uh, state in your... So, so imagine this is one of your pinned uh, states in your NFA, okay? So you find, you, and you just do each one in turn. You, know, you, you find the next state. And, and using, using this transition function for your NFA, okay? Where that's, that's uh, one of your members of your current state in your NFA. And you just do one at a time. So, uh, so you calculate the next state, and you do that for each uh, member of your uh, subset of your DFA, right? So this will give you a set, and you now can take the union of of those sets, and that will be the next state of your DFA. Remember, the DFA is um, its state. The state of a D of the DFA is a subset of the states of Q. Oof. Uh, well, I suppose if I stewed on it quite a bit, I might be able to make it a bit clearer. <laughs> You're probably very confused now. 
This, this, is what, this is what I'm saying about um, it gets it gets tougher, right? Uh, you need to uh, you know, really really study this uh, because this this sort of level will continue on for a lot of the the, the text. So uh, now the, the essence of your uh, transition function for your simulating DFA is is this equation. Right? So you have a union here of sets. And uh, each set is uh, like the, the set of I thought that's what my camera had pinged. Okay, so uh, yeah, the, the, the essence is is this equation in, because it gives you the transition function for your simulate. DFA, and you you uh, you find the transition function. You use the transition function for the NFA for each member of your current state uh, in the DFA. Now. Um, Okay, sort of stew on that. Hopefully, uh, things might become a bit clearer uh, in the continuation of the proof. But uh, you know, it's like I'm saying that's that's about the level, um, intellectual abstraction level, that uh, the rest of the course will will take. So, if you're having trouble with it, be warned. Ciao.